All right, so you've got a logic board of any type that's causing issues. This particular motherboard belongs to a Nintendo Switch, and what's happening is it doesn't, and what's happening is it's not charging, it's not receiving power. If I grab my multimeter and we put it into diode mode, we can go in and test some things. We're gonna put a red probe on the ground. I'll just go right here on the top of the charge port, and I can test and see if the battery line, for example, is good. These first two pins are the positive side. We've got a data line here, and then we've got the grounds, and everything looks good there. There's two rows of pins on the charge port. The first row you could test, but the second row is hidden, so a tool like this comes in handy. We'll go ahead and turn it on. This will allow us to test all of the pins in the charge port to see if there's an issue with the charge port, or if there's an issue with the line attached to the charge port. It'll run its test, and when it's done, it'll tell us if everything's good. And you can see there, we've got everything except this one in red. It says it's ground, which is a CC1 line. CC2, CC1 typically are tied to the M92 chip. And you can see here, if we, if we look, we've got ground, open line, open line, a reading, and then the ground, which should be the same value as CC2, roughly. So we should be looking for a point five four eight this my multimeter might give me a different reading but we should not be getting ground on that and we are if you don't have this tool you could test that line if the issue was with the cc2 line you wouldn't be able to read it but if i go one by one you can see the first one i get ground second one open line third one open line fourth one i get a reading fifth one we're getting a partial short so let's go to the m 92 chip, which is right here, and we'll start to test the capacitors around it. That's ground, and we're getting a good reading there. At the inside of these three capacitors is where you should test. The outside is going to be ground. First one, we're getting a reading. Second one, we're getting a short. Third one, we're getting a reading. So what we need to do now is remove the M92. This is a common fault on this device, and if we remove it, we will and, and it clears the short, we can test that and see. All right, I'm gonna get my little Omnivice here. These things are really convenient. They weigh like a couple pounds. So it's a nice sturdy base for me to clamp the board into. We're gonna take some flux. I'm just gonna go around the perimeter of the IC. This isn't necessary for removal, but it definitely helps keep the solder shiny. We'll need a decent pair of tweezers so that we're not not knocking around the components around the perimeter. All right, I'm gonna come in with my hot air. We'll heat it up. And if any of you are wondering, I've got my temperature at 450, airflow at 100. You need to see the solder get shiny. Should be ready to move at any second. We'll lift straight up and we'll let things cool down. All right, we'll come back in with the multimeter. Red probe on the ground. And let's test that capacitor. And sure enough, we have no more short if we go down to pin five, again, we've got nothing. We can also verify it by plugging in, turn back on our, we can also verify it by plugging in our tester here and it will, and it just shows open line on CC1 now because we have removed the circuit. So it's just not connected to anything, but the ground is gone, which means that there is an internal short on this chip and I'll just need to install a new one. Now there are other ways to find the short using a power supply and something like this, free spray. Okay. Where you spray this on the board, take a power supply, inject voltage on the line that you know is shorted, and what will melt in the area you have the spray on would be the IC here. The, uh, the frost that covers it would melt, and that would help you isolate the chip. But what happens over time is you eventually run into patterns where you see that with, especially with a tool like this, when you have a short to ground on certain lines, you can automatically identify the issue. And that is how it is with all repairs, whether it's an iPhone, an iPad, a MacBook, you start to identify patterns. And the M92 is a highly volatile chip for, because it does receive a lot of abuse through charging and so it does go bad often. And finally, one other way to find a short would be using something like this, an infrared camera. There are tons of different types of infrared cameras. 
that can help you isolate shorts on motherboards. Again, you'll need a way to inject power, whether that's the battery, a power supply, or even plugging in a cable with battery connected. There are many different ways on basically any device to have a short present itself under thermal camera, free spray, even simply touching the board in different spots. The process is the same. Identify the problem area, track down the short by using those various methods, and you'll be able to then relieve the short, replace the component, and put it back together.